So the next portion of this course is going to focus on something called object-oriented programming, which is really the foundation for modern programming for the most part. Object-oriented programming is just the idea of modeling our programs after the real world. The real world is made up of certain objects. You look around you, you see objects everywhere, whether that's a chair, a car, a couch, whatever it is. All of these things are objects. So to give you a brief little analogy, let's say for example a person wants to drive to a car or drive to the store. In order to drive to the store, they have to get into a car, they have to put the keys into the ignition, they turn the ignition, the car starts, and they drive away. Fine. But do they know what actually is going on when they turn that key in the ignition? No. They have no idea. Moreover, they don't care. It's unimportant to them. It's like a black box. They put data in, which is the key turning, and the only thing they get for feedback is the car starts, or it doesn't start, depending on the car itself. Now, of course, underneath the hood, we know that, that that turning of that key is sending an electrical signal to the starter, which is then igniting the engine and everything goes. That's fine. But, again, the user doesn't know or care about any of that. They don't need to. So think of this another way. Let's say you have two people. One drives an automatic car. One drives a manual car. The automatic car, the person only needs to care about really steering, accelerating, and which gear it's in. That's about it. Whereas someone that drives a manual car is going to have to care about all of that, but they also need to care about the RPMs, or revolutions per minute the engine's going, so they can switch gears appropriately. Otherwise, they won't be able to without grinding and causing some other problems. So in order to uh, properly understand this idea of an object-oriented program, we need to define what is an object. And as I said, everything around us is an object. But in programming terms, how do we define what an object really is? Well, an object is nothing more than a structure for grouping data. Not only data, but functionality. So we like to define this in a little bit more uh, precise terms. So we say it's a structure structure for grouping attributes also known as data and behaviors, also known as functionality. functionality. So a structure for grouping attributes, data, and behaviors functionality. That's really all that it takes to define what an object is once we've supplied that. So let's say, for example, we're talking about a person. A person can be defined, its attributes can be defined as something like its hair or sorry, its hair color, its hair length, the height of the person, the weight of the person, the person's name, skin tone, age, all these different things define and make a person unique. On top of that, pretty much most people have the exact same functionality or behaviors that they can do. They can walk, they can talk, they can run, they can jump, they can sit, all these other little things. These are actions that are um, standard to all persons or people. So in programming, we want to know a way to define, in general terms, an object. So we do this using something called a class. You've probably heard this term or seen it in some of the programs that we've done so far up to this point. And a class is like a blueprint. And what I mean by that is it's a general idea of what the object should be. And then that object then more focuses that idea. So I'll give you an example of um, a new subdivision. In a new subdivision, there's usually one blueprint. So the, the designers, or sorry, not the designers, the construction workers, are looking at this one blueprint, and pretty much every house in the new subdivision is built off of this one blueprint. But why doesn't everybody's house look exactly the same? Then? Because the owners get to choose certain options or attributes about their house. So, for example, some might have a gravel driveway, some might have an asphalt driveway, some might have a granite countertop, some might have a different type of countertop, some might have hardwood floors, some might have linoleum or marble. These are options that the owner gets to choose, but really, it's still the same blueprint. You're just changing a few of the features or the attributes about the house. Functionality-wise, they're all going to pretty much serve the exact same functionality. This is typical. Most objects... Um, or mo most classes, generally speaking, they define what an object can be at its base at its base root level. Um, but when we create an object using this blueprint, 
we specify that special little information which makes it unique. However, all objects from the same blueprint are really going to share the same behaviors or functionality. So, a class is really similar in design for all of the objects. And what, let me clear that up for you just a little bit. Whenever we have a blueprint, I can use that blueprint to create a single instance or example of that blueprint. That single instance is what we call an object. So an object is created using the blueprint. Now in a subdivision, there's more than one instance of that blueprint. There's many instances of that blueprint, each one holding their own information, which makes them unique. Just like your parents. Your parents may have multiple children. Each of these children are part of the people class. You all share the exact same um, attributes, but have different values for those attributes. That might be your eye color, your hair color, or whatever. However, you all share the same functionality. You can walk, you can run, you can talk, you can sit, you can poop, you can pee, you can all do all these different things. These are all different um, aspects of the functionality, or sorry, aspects of the class itself. So, um, when we're talking about classes and objects, the class is the blueprint, the general look and feel of the object, which is a in single instance or sometimes multiple instances of that class. How do we actually define this class? Well, that's the next video.